Yeah. <laughs> Fancy you meeting me here. I'm, and me too. Oh, I guess you're pretty important as well. Oh, really? Probably more important, actually, this keto cooking. Oh my gosh, you guys, are you excited? A little special edition. Are you guys excited? Today. We've got Keto Chat live here today. I just received a copy of Maria Emmerich's new cookbook, Keto Comfort Foods. Yum, yum, yum. Put that in there for you. Boom. Right? Keto Comfort Foods. It's available live right now on Amazon, but we are going to make um, chicken pot pie. I don't know how good that looks, if you can see it on here, but that thing looks pretty delicious. We're going to make, um, you know, a double or triple batch of this um, because I've got growing boys that I'm feeding here today. My, my son, Kendall. And you've got me and you can finally see how tall I am yeah. standing up next to her. And I am a lot taller than my mom. He's on a, he's on stilts though. I'm on stilts. I'm we're just walking around. Because we're making a big batch of this, I'm going to make this whole thing in a big giant casserole dish. So, uh, um, yeah. So this book is available now and I got a copy of it for review. I can tell you that just like all of... Um, Victory Belts books, lots of beautiful photos of the Absolutely food. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous pictures of food. And Maria Emmerich kills it in all of her, um, basically she's the queen of keto comfort food. So this is perfect cookbook. Would you say she's the Paula Deen of keto? Ooh, maybe, yeah. That's a title. That's a title right there. <laughs> Paula Deen of keto. Yeah, and this is really cool because <laughs> this is... This is who's going to be the publisher of my book as well, so I'm really excited because we're going to have lots of beautiful photos in, in my book. We were, yeah, we were talking about these photos, but our photos are going to be much better. Much, <laughs> we'll, much better. We'll see. We'll, see. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it our best. Yeah. We'll, so we'll, we're going to try to monitor questions as well. We've got the, the laptop over, over here as well, so we can pull up questions. And so, um, hey, if you've got the cookbook and the ingredients in, on hand, cook along with us. It's, um, we're, we have a little bit of a numbers advantage. We'll have three people cooking here in a second. Yeah. But and plus, I already have all the ingredients out on the counter, as well as... But you know, we love to talk a lot, so... Yeah, you might be able to beat us. <laughs> yeah, all right, so um, chicken pot pies. Ingredients are going to be... Um, basically, it's going to be um, chicken, onions, and celery, and butter and cream cheese in the middle as like the pot pie filling. And then um, some of you might be familiar with fathead pizza dough is essentially the topping that's going to go on this. And then you put it in the oven and uh, make it nice and brown and crispy on top. And speaking of that, the very first step is going to be to preheat the oven to 425. And um, I'm going to put it on convection actually because this recipe is written for individual little pot pies, but we're, since we're going to make it in a big dish, it will probably need to cook just a little bit longer than what oh, the recipe definitely. says. So, right? So um, the first thing that we're going to do then is make the dough. Make the dough, the that's dough. right. I was told what to do beforehand, but I'm going to act like I don't know what I'm doing. Did because... you wash your hands yet? No, that's what I'm saying. Is oh. I'm, not, I'm not doing anything yet. It's like you're picking your nose earlier, so you better wash your hands. Scratching my butt. The thing is that you guys aren't going to actually eat this food. Hot. Yeah, who's sorry? Why do I care if I wash my yeah, hands? Exactly. Like, I, so I already got my own. Build up your own bacteria tolerance. And so, Ian's going to start out by grating the cheese. Um, now, whole milk mozzarella is very important. Whole milk is going to be um, high fat, but you want it to be semi dry because it's going to be easier to grate. And um, so you don't want to get the mozzarella that comes fresh in the liquid because that's just going to be a nightmare to try to grate. And so I went to Whole Foods. Oh, never see, uh, we've never had ones of these dry before. We usually get the ones that are a little bit, a little bit wetter. It's not too bad, I don't think. But well, it's, it'll I'll, be similar. Uh, this one's like a little bit drier to me. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Because the other ones have a little bit of a uh, like a like a feel to them, like they're kind of squishy. This looks like it's yeah, this is pretty thick. This is yeah. this is like pizza making cheese. <laughs> We, we usually do fathead pizza dough um, recipe maybe like once a month. Once a month, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the other cheese. And I, I gotta say, I really love this type of dough. This, yeah. The almond flour and, uh, and cheese, it's just such a simple and it's kind of, you know, yeah. it just works so well. Yeah, so basically the dough is just going to be some mozzarella cheese. Um, oh, butter too. Oh, darn. And some almond flour. And some sea salt. Oh, and an egg. Oh, the egg, yeah, that's right. Egg. Um, so we'll see. This is going to be one and three quarters cup per batch. So if we can make uh, three times that. So Mr. Math Whiz. One and three quarters cup times three? Yeah. Uh, what is that? Three quarters. What? One, three, oh, one and three quarters. Oh, so it's, <laughs> it's a, uh, oh, so three uh, and then uh, 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 five. Uh, okay, type in the chat. 
Yeah. Can you guys do some Just math? Just do, do, sep- do them separately. Uh, What's one times three? Five. No, damn it. Uh, it's three. Yeah, okay. And, and then, then three, quarters three quarters times, times three. three. How much is that? Is... While you figure that out, so I'm going to rinse nine, off the Nine quarters. Nine quarters? Yeah. Nine quarters. Oh, okay. Is... So then you got to reduce. So it's uh, five and one quarter. That's how much cups we need. Yeah. Five so and a quarter. So do you want a big measuring cup for that? Um, yeah, probably we got. Yeah, we do have a we have a jumbo measuring cup. For those of you visiting us in another country, we can use liters. Ha! <laughs> I only use cups here. All right. Or- so while he's grating the cheese to get ready to make the dough, and you're gonna love watching this. If you haven't ever made made fat head dough yourself, this is pretty impressive. The way that cheese and almond flour and egg turns into dough. I mean. You'll be learning cooking class all, all the time about how, like, you know, baking is a science, and it's all a science, right? It's not just like, oh, I put, you know, flavors together like you and your, you know, uh, stovetop cooking or whatever, but it's kind of weird. The, che- the cheese and the dough, just, or the uh, flour, just kind of comes together and it makes this fantastic texture. Well, so we have a little trick that we do, because if you can notice in our kitchen, we do not have a microwave. It's one of the keys to I making... I forget that's like a, like a big deal. Yeah, right? <laughs> We've lived so long without one, and it was just because... Uh, was, we... I think it broke. It yeah, when like... we lived before, we had a microwave, and one day I'm using it, and it just starts making sparks. Oh, yeah, it was exploded. Yeah, and so we're like, well, we probably shouldn't use that anymore. We just tossed it out, and... We never really used it, so we just never bought another one. I remember that day too, because I came home from school and you just tossed it right out the front, like right outside the door. And I, oh, I think that was old was toaster. The, the other one? toaster okay. that caught on fire. That's a different story. We've had lots of things catch on fire. I guess we, our cooking supplies aren't great. You know, the only the only downside about grating all this cheese is when it gets down to this low, I you just, just want to eat. I it. just want to eat it. I'm just going <laughs> to eat this. Like, like don't look, guys. I'm just going to munch this big piece of mozzarella cheese. So while he's doing that. And uh, while we tell more about the story about the microwave, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and chop celery and onion. So we need a quarter cup of each times three is what? Can you do that math? Oh, I flew in my mouth. Quarter cup of each times three. Um, that one's easier. Yeah, That's I just think it's quarter. probably only gonna be like three of these is what it's gonna be. So we don't even need all the celery. Let's just toss this up. Just throw it away. Just toss it outside. It's absolutely a gorgeous day outside right now. We have oh my gosh. With the door open. It was raining earlier, and then it got sunny, and then it started snowing, and well, now it's gorgeous outside. The snow is actually just the, uh, I think it's the blossoms on the cherry trees. So yes, yeah, it's, it's spring. Can it's spring, we give a little so. tour outside? A tour outside? You want to go Let's take Let's see if the, the cords will go. Just to, I'm, I can unplug it, you know. No, just come well, yeah. Here. Keep going. They're telling our followers about the video. So, yes, I just got back from Mexico yesterday, and I got back in, and it was like 45 degrees and raining, and so I brought some wet, um, some sun, Seattle, you're welcome. We needed it. It was kind of a bad, uh, a bad week there. It was, it was absolutely ridiculous while you were gone. Yeah? There would be, like, monsoons for, like, an hour, like 10 minutes, right? And then it's sunny for 30, and then a monsoon again. It was, I felt like I was in India. India? Well, yeah. Just- like the last time you were in India. Yeah, the last right? time I was in India. Yeah. It was just I like think, that. I, I think I've seen Slumdog Billionaire <coughs> too many times, and I just feel like I'm, oh, you know, yeah, I feel like know, I've just been there. Right? You know what India's like, so. Yeah. All right, so chopping veggies is all about efficiency of cut, is what the chefs call it. You know, you want so me to bring it over here? I'm going to stack these together. Well, if you want to. Yeah, I'll bring the camera over there for a second. I'll, sh- I'll show the audience this fantastic technique here. Um, diced celery, yes. So we should pull up any, um, see if there's any videos here for any, uh, meat. Oh, you already got the meat on. Yeah, already had a meat. All right. All right. All right, so. I'm going to bring it down. We've got them stacked. I've washed them. Right. And I want to get them in a way that they're going to hold. And I'm going to wrap my knuckles in so I don't cut my fingers off. But if you can see this, you're going to, you can run the knife right up next to your knuckle. And then you can't cut yourself. Although I might cut my thumb. But no. <laughs> um, so, you know, a dice is think about a kind of a square shape that I want them in. So I can just do this. And then I'm going to go back in and cut them on the, on the bias. 
On the bias? On the bias. What does that even mean? Against the green? Well, oh. actually, I'm going against the green right now. I like a little bit of the green leafy stuff in there, so we're going to put that in there too. It almost kind of feels like parsley, right? It's a little, right, little, little yeah. Green stuff. The green leafy things are actually very high in nutrients for us, so. All right, so then I'm just going to go back this way and give it another rough chop so it's kind of like a dice. And when you're going to saute things in a pan, you want to make sure they're all kind of uniform size. Now, why is that? Ooh, I know, I know. I'm trying to make this an interactive class. I know, I know. Uh, you, yes? Oh, yes, me. Um, uh, I think, is it A, so they can cook evenly? Yes, and you didn't even have all four choices, and you picked <laughs> the right one. I'd like to solve the riddle. This is just right about three quarters of a cup there. That's perfect. So again, we're doing about three times this recipe because, oh, should I tell the, I didn't finish telling the microwave story, but I can tell the story about how I, why I make such large portions now? Any story. I think any story is good. So is this going to show up if I try to cut the onion yeah, right here? You're good, yeah. It's a pretty good angle. I got the whole cutting board. It's okay. Cutting board. Um, all right, so the reason that I make really big batches when I cook, even though I only have one son, and those of you that have more than one son, I, I feel for you because I don't know how you ever fed them, but... Um, Let me pull it back and show your face so oh, I can yeah? see you. Well, but I'm not going to cut that then. Okay. So, we'll just get it in not there. right now. So, um, so I remember he was probably about 12 years old. And the thing is that he's been this tall since he was 12 years old. Size 14 shoe, nearly 6'4". And um, so it was a, you know, he, he ate a little bit of food. He was a hungry kid. And so I remember making dinner. What is this? Back a little bit. Oh, back a little bit? Yeah, yeah perfect. Perfect. Okay. Uh, making dinner. I don't remember what I made, but you know, I put some effort into it. I probably spent 20 or 30 minutes one... cooking dinner. Dropped it? No, 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 no. That's that's a, that's you, a, you did there's that. So many... <laughs> <laughs> there's so many food stories in our family. Um, so I made dinner, you know, I spent 20 or 30 minutes cooking whatever it was, and I took out, you know, a giant plate of food for him to eat in the kitchen, and there was just enough left for me to have dinner. And so I go back in, I just walk to the kitchen and dish up my plate, and by the time I get back to the, to the dining room, he's done eating his entire plate, and he looks at me with little puppy dog eyes like, is there more, Mom? Because I'm hungry. And I was like, all that was left was my food. So I had the choice then that, as a mother, I had to either give him my food and not have anything to eat and figure out what else to eat for me, or leave him hungry and tell him, no, there's no more food. And you know, I was a mean mom, so I told him he had to starve. No, I'm just kidding. I, of course, I gave him my plate of food and figured out something else to eat, but I learned my lesson. From I don't then think on, that she could ever not give me food. If I'm hungry, I get my food, because I'm a hungry boy. <laughs> now I'm a little more, no, can't eat that. She'll make me cook now. I mean, I guess it's yeah. a little understandable. I could probably figure it out. But. Yeah, he's 20 uno now, so he's <laughs> <old enough. laughs> uno. She just got back uno. from Mexico, so she's practicing all of her yeah. Spanish a lot. I was, I she showed it. me her little, um... A little translation card. It was kind of like a little cheat well, they sheet. They gave it for to me at the airport. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, I, you're a white lady. You look like you need this. You first time here? Mm, I yeah. think so. You want you're this very one. Pale. You want a little assistance. So from that day on, I've always made very large portions of whatever I'm making, and that's just selfish reasons because I want to make sure there's enough left to make something. She already different. cares enough for me. She yeah. just started caring about herself. <laughs> started making enough food for I her. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't hungry. So. Uh, and, and he loves eating leftovers too. That's also a really great thing is that he's never had a problem eating leftovers. Like it's never, it's like, oh yum, I don't have to cook anything. <laughs> so we always make, and then now that I'm on keto, I just am so not so hungry anymore. And so I love cooking one time a big batch and then we just eat it for a few days too. So yeah, we typically do that with pizza night is we'll make like four or five pizzas for the three of us that live here. I gotta come back and on camera here, but I'm yeah. gonna say something so it's not this like this mysterious voice across the room. But no, I, yeah, Haley, my girlfriend just made burgers the other day, and yeah. I've been eating burgers for the past three days. Cause like, she made like six of them for the two of you. Something like that, yeah. And she she's had one the day they were made. She doesn't really like she doesn't really like leftovers yeah. though, so it's kind of why. But I re I realized that I was like, huh, these are kind of just all mine. I just eat them all myself. <laughs> uh, cameraman, will you readjust so I can show how we cut an onion? Uh, right away. So onions for a lot of people are really tricky to cut, but it's really easy when you know what you're doing. And uh, we're gonna come in here. So and it's going. Come on whoa, down. whoa, whoa! Not that quick. Too far. Oh, oh, good. All right. So perfect. Notice on your onion, you want to orient yourself to the onion. 
the root is the hairy part and the stem or whatever it is is the other part, right? And so, you know, the way that grows in the ground is like this. We're going to want to cut it. Think of this as the, uh, the North Pole and the South Pole. Sure. We're going to cut from North Pole to South Pole. This is how I do it, right? So one chop. This is the keto way. <laughs> This is the keto technique. All right, so what have we got then? We can see the root down here. Root is going to be holding it all together while we chop it. We're going to use the power of the root. And then what I do is that I just want to take off this outer layer of skin. So I just chop, make one chop on the top here, basically, and then pull off any of the layers that are papery or rubbery or not nice and juicy. All right? Yeah, pretty much if it feels kind of thick, Maybe a little brown, a little off. Rip that off. Rip now, that I'm going to clean off my board because mise en place, that's not Spanish, that's French. I think it's French, yeah. Um, get, get your stuff in place, right? Like, so I don't want all the little onion hairs. Got the on little Miss, Miss Junior Gordon Ramsay over here. <laughs> it's raw! F you! Whoa! I'm going to swear a lot. No. Jeez. All right, it's a family so, friendly show. So now what I'm going to do, I've got a nice flat surface to cut, off, to put the onion down on. And the way that I'm going to make really even pieces of onion, because again, you want even pieces because a student over here said that that makes it so that it cooks evenly. Um, and so what I'm going to do is then I'm going to cut, make cuts around like this, evenly spaced. Clean off my knife here a little bit. Evenly spaced, and then I'm going to go back and slice it this way, and they'll be magically little tiny diced onions. So I want to keep the root intact. I'm not going to cut all the way through. So just cut down to the root, but not, can you see that? Can you see that? You're not actually seeing, it's still holding it together. Many of you watching this don't know, but I actually used to teach cooking classes. And I guess technically right now I am teaching a cooking class. So look how we've got all those nice little, uh, I don't know, spokes on the wheel. Good turn. And now I'm going to cut evenly this way. And watch what happens. Remember to keep those knuckles cut. Yeah. We end up with nice little even little pieces. Now for the last little bit, I usually flip it over and just cut it down like this. And one of the keys to cooking class is that you never stop talking. No stop talking. That's, that is a hard job for me. <laughs> and so that's pretty much perfect right there as well. So that ends up being about half an onion. So one of the keys to cutting carbs down in cooking is to do a lot less onions than you're used to. So that's one of the tricks that I had to learn. One of the ways I had to relearn how to cook when I became keto is that I used to start out with like one big giant onion for every recipe I was going to make and then I counted the carbs on it afterwards and I was like, oh my god, that's way too many carbs, what am I going to do? So half an onion ends up being about all that we're doing for triple the, um, the recipe here. Um, and there's all the glorious cheese yeah, I just wanted well. to bring it in here, this is kind of, it's just those three little bricks we have, this makes it all this fluffy cheese and this is going to go really nicely into the, um, into the crust there, it's going to really make a really nice dough. Yeah. And it's going to be way more. Than, we're going to have extra dough, so we're going to be making some other stuff with that. All right, so what I want to do is saute these, right? So what does that mean? i got to heat up some fat in my pan. Now, if I follow in the recipe, she calls for butter. Here, I'm going um, to pull this over in the original spot. Yeah. So I've got some Kerrygold butter here, and I'm going to use that in my pan. Really? Stainless steel. You want to heat the pan first before you add any fat. So this is one of the keys and how it's different from cooking in, um, if you have any non-stick pans in your house, you're used to being able to stick the stuff in the pan as soon as you turn it on. But with, with stainless steel, you need to heat it first. That's going to seal the pores in the pan and prevent sticking. Um, do you want to go on with the... Um, I don't want to... Do you want to measure out the oh, measure stuff cheese? Yeah. yeah. Sure, well, I'll let you keep going with the dough, and we'll, um, we'll show you how Try you... Try to remember the... Um, I don't remember the, the technique. What do I do? Well, you got the you closed the that one. That's well, the you one. can you can see the uh, video on the camera, so it's like. Oh, okay. We'll turn it. Turn it this way. Then. Okay. Yeah. We need to see if there's anybody asking questions. I'm I'm cooking right now. That's the most important show. thing in the world. What is the um? You know, what's the what? We can, what do I do for this? I gotta I mix the cheese together. The boost is unavailable. Okay. We got. 
three likes. Hey, you know what you can do? Is you can share this right now. Let your friends know. If you really want to. But I think you should. I think uh, you do want to. Yeah, only if you want to. Only if you want to, though. Only if you want to. So, what no is pressure. my... What's my... What am I doing with these things? So, for making a triple batch of this, you said five and three quarters cups of cheese? Five and a quarter. Five and... You want to redo the math there? So, it's nine... Nine fourths... No. Yeah, right. So, it's one and a quarter yeah. times three. So, it's three... No, one and a quarter? Or one and three quarters? Do you need to write it no, down? No, what, what was it? One and a quarter or one and three it's quarters? It's one and three quarters times three. Oh, one and three quarters. Yeah, so it's three and nine quarters. Okay. Which is, yeah, five and a quarter. Yeah. Okay. Five right. and a quarter. Five and a quarter cups of cheese. For total? Total. Okay, well, I'm Todos gonna... bien. Todos bien. And Change then you're going to need uh, six tablespoons of butter. We're going to need to get some more butter now. We've never made a uh, fat head dough with butter in it. That's going to be delicious. What was our fat that we always put in our stuff? Um, just, we just put egg and cornmeal. meal. Oh. No fat at all? No extra fat? Not any extra. So this is going to be... Where is the looking for a bowl that is nice and... It's nice and big. Nice and big. Well, there's that glass one back there. Is this one bigger? I think this is smaller. This is the same one. I literally just put it back in there. <laughs> no, um, hey, is that you want the one that's got the chicken in it? Uh, I guess so. The raw chicken? No, we're just right, kidding. So we got four. This is a lot. And... All right, so once this gets warm, then I'm going to start sauteing the onions and celery in here, add some herbs, and then I'm going to chop the chicken up. Let me move this onion out of the way. We won't need that on the chicken chopping board. We got, enough, we got all the onions chopped up. We don't need anything else. So six tablespoons of butter. That's going to be almost a full stick. Holy moly. So we're starting to talk about how we don't have a microwave, and... Yeah, we got a little distracted. For a while, I couldn't figure out, like, oh, how are we ever going to make fathead dough? Because you got to heat the dough up in the microwave. Well, yeah, you got to warm up the, uh, you got to warm up the, uh, the cheese to kind of melt it all together. Yeah. So wait, don't we have to put this in the platter to, uh... Yeah, so I think mush it around with your hands, and then... Or... So, so we just put the butter right nice in this, and we're going to mush it all together. The butter is nice and room temperature, yeah, it's nice and soft. Yeah. So just kind of mix this all together. So we finally, who was it who figured out the, how we could do this in the ovens? I mean, it's probably, probably me, I don't know. Probably. You're just, I'm, I'm just a genius, yeah. so. So here's what we do. So those of you that don't have a microwave, I know there's probably like two people in the whole world that don't have a microwave, or at least two people in the UN, United States and Canada. Yeah. Um, so we have a pizza tray. You could just do this on a cookie sheet as well. And so instead of heating it up in the microwave, we spread it out thinly on uh, any kind of a pan, put it in the oven, and you just want to heat it up until it's lightly melted. <laughs> I'll put more butter in this one. That's all the butter that's okay. going to go in that. Cause... All right. I'm gonna t can you pass it over here, and I will spread it all out. I'll spread it. Spread it. A little bit further. Hey, that reminds me of that. You remember that peanut butter and jelly song? No. That is the early 2000s right there. I did not recall that long ago. Oh. I only like the fresh memes. The fresh memes, yeah. You know, this was my mom recently discovered what a dad is. Accidentally, if, and then he's embarrassed and won't tell me. If all, if any of you people on this live chat know what a dad is, yeah, go ahead and show us. You know how to do it. The, do the dad. Yeah, this. Yeah. It, oh, do you have to have both hands it, though? It's both hands. Yeah, yeah, both hands. Yeah. Oh. oh wow. Careful with that. Butter on the forehead. Safety precautions. I hear that's good for burns. I don't think so. This, do that this, is, this is a lot harder to get all spread out with the butter in it. Yeah. It's a little more solid, but I think it should melt all nicely. So basically, we're not making pizza out of it, but this is our technique for how do you get the cheese nice and melty when you don't own a microwave. Yeah. Not the end of the world, I promise you. Yeah, microwaves are nice, but it's just kind of like a shortcut. It's not mandatory. You can get away with it in other ways. We actually, don't we usually put a parchment paper on this? You yeah. can, but you, it, you don't have to. The yeah, thing I got, is it's not going to stick because it's so high in fat. I got all the yeah, so all the butter and the cheese all mixed together. Spread it out like this, so we can get it all nice and melted. So mix with the almond meal, so the almond flour. Yes. 
Same thing, yeah. Mind opening this for me? I got a greasy hands. All right, we got the oven preheated to 425. We're just going to put this in here for, you know, a couple minutes, maybe yeah. seconds or something until it's warm and It does not take long. You don't need to be liquid. It's just looking to be a little bit easier to work with. A little bit creamier. So let me talk to you about sauteing. So heated the pan. We added some fat. The recipe calls for butter. And you could use any kind of fat. You could use lard, tallow, ghee, olive oil if you want. And so I initially stirred the veggies so they got coated in fat, but then I want to let them rest. One of the keys to developing a lot of flavor is to develop the brown color on what's the, rhyme? the veggies. What, brown. What's the what's the rhyme though? Low Low and slow? Low and slow. Low and slow. The flavor's in the brown. The flavor's in the brown. Rhyme. That doesn't rhyme, but that's another truth in cooking. And I don't know if you can hear this right now, but this is a beautiful sizzle. So cooking is about watching it and hearing it. Are we and using it? You want to put it in there? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Um, so more so than, like most recipes, they can't tell you very well like what to look for, what the sound is, right? So they try to describe, like put it on medium heat for five or six minutes and saute it. What is medium? You know? Yeah, the, and the problem is, is that everybody's stove is different, right? And so, and then most people when they're sauteing, they do this. They stir the whole time. Because you don't want it to burn. Yeah, and when you stir too fast, and then they like don't let it cook long enough. And then they're like, okay, that's done. If you stir it too fast, you're preventing it from getting hot enough to brown. Browning occurs at over 375 degrees. And so one of the reasons why we cook in fat is it allows it to get to that temperature. So remember back from middle school um, chemistry. Middle school chemistry or whatever, what temperature does water boil at? Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, or 212 Fahrenheit. Right. That's as hot as things can get if you don't have the fat in there. So once you add fat, that actually can get to a much higher temperature. And so that's why low-fat cooking doesn't taste as good as stuff with fat in it. You're not, you're not cooking it enough. It's as not getting hot enough. As you said, is that, that Maria is the Paula Deen of... Um, Paula Deen of Kyoto. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to check the... the hot mitt. So probably getting pretty close. What you want to do is you want to stir it initially oh. to coat it, and then let it set. Give it lots of space. Give it some time. How does that look? Perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for for this melted cheese butter fiasco here. See, when I tilt it a little bit, it's nice it's and gonna runny. Go right off. It's not, it'll just come right off the pan there. This might be why we need to refrigerate it a little bit because of the butter in there. So, so uh, just put it here and then put the flour in there. Yeah, so you're going to do, okay, so for the dough, we've got the cheese, the butter, we're going to do, we need three eggs, so we need one more egg. So put the egg in a, maybe in this, and um, whip it up first before you ever beat it. That's the egg! All right, now you probably can't see from that far away, but we're starting to get some nice little browning on these veggies. Remember the flavors in the brown. We want to get it. Now, another mistake people make is they have it up too high. They're really patient. They want it to cook fast. And you want it to be just the right temperature that you hear that perfect sizzle. And then you see that. Um, if we have smoke coming off, that's an indicator that it's too hot. It's the wrong the That's down. not what you want to do. Yeah, so stir it occasionally, redistribute it so that it can get a little more browning. And that's what's happening is there's all these different flavor combinations that are happening. So actually back when I would teach cooking classes, we'd talk about the Maillard reaction. That's the reaction that creates hundreds of different flavor chemicals in this browning process. And again, it only happens at high enough temperature um, when you've got fat there to allow it instead of boiling. So you've noticed the difference of when you boil broccoli versus roasting broccoli in the oven, right? Yeah, it's way different. Yeah, boiled only can get to 212 degrees. It can't go through the Maillard reaction. It can't develop all those flavor chemicals. Roasting in the oven can be at a higher temperature. Usually you coat it in some fat first, and so you get that nice browning in the Maillard reaction. So when we're, when we're cooking keto, we want some nice flavors. We're not looking for that, you know, cheap low quality, quick flavor. We're looking for that really good stuff. One of the reasons we don't have a microwave. Is, yeah, we're looking for that good flavor of onions. Well, 
Speaking of microwaves, that's actually why microwaves don't taste as good because microwaves work by just boiling the water that's inside of food. And so microwaves cook at 212 degrees. And so you can't get that browning in the microwave. So what am I doing now? I got the, I got the cheese and the butter all melted over here. So you need to, um, three eggs in this. Three eggs. Yolk or? The whole thing. Okay. Some nice pastured eggs. We don't have chickens here because where we live, you have to have like an acre or something to have chickens yeah, in the city. You have so a little, you know, a covered area. You have to buy, buy eggs at the store. So we've got both um, uh, Vital Farms pasture raised and then also this um, Happy Hens pasture raised. So this means that chickens have access to the outside and the yolks are going to be, oops, I think I broke one. Uh, be Apparently nice they're just going to get destroyed yellow. by Carol over here. Yellow. All right, and then you're going to need to... I haven't had a white egg in probably five years. A white egg? Yeah, like a white shell egg. Oh. I always have the uh, brown shell eggs. Oh, I think that's a little bit boxy. Really? Maybe she's not memorable enough. All right, so this is starting to get some nice browning, so I want to cut up the chicken quickly so that I can get that in there as well. But I think I want to add the herbs next. Let me just check the recipe. So again, if you're just tuning in, we um, I got a copy of Maria Emmerich's new cookbook, Keto Comfort Foods, and we're making chicken pot pie. And um, so this is available right now on Amazon. If you want to go get a copy. Yeah, look at the price, and it's I think it's it's 20, 20, 20 bucks. Not too yeah. bad. It's got an this amazing is, deal. Yeah, and pretty much there's there is a food photo on pretty much every other page in this cookbook. If you haven't got one of these cookbooks yet, they're gorgeous. All right, so keeping an eye on this. So then you're also going to do um, three well, quarters. Beat, three, up or? Yeah, beat those up and add them to that, and then a three quarters of the cup times three for your almond flour too. Three quarters times three. So Where does the herbs and spices go that I had out? Oh, they're over two here. Two and a quarter. What are you making for dinner? Post in the comments. Yeah, let us um, know. Pot pie is a little, uh, quarter, quarter. a little difficult. All right, so oregano and thyme are the herbs that are going in here, and the recipe calls for a quarter of a teaspoon each, and I'm making, we're making three quarters of, I'm, I'm sorry, three times the recipe. So there's a half, and there's another quarter of the oregano, and thyme as well. Oh my gosh, it smells like chicken pot pie now. It already does, right? Yeah. All right, and then I need to get my, pull up my flour in there. All right, so this is starting to brown. I'm starting to get some smoke on there, which tells me my pan is getting too hot. So I'm going to remove this from the heat while I cook up the chicken so that I don't end up with burnt. Because it's still going to keep cooking even after you've taken it off the... Yeah. Uh... I'm going to spread it out so it has a chance to make some more flavor there. Oh, wow, I can see that. It smells good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right, chicken. We've got some organically local raised chicken thighs. Almost skinless chicken thighs. You could definitely do skin on chicken. I wouldn't do bone in though. I mean, that might be bad news. It's just it's just easier to cook or to eat things that don't have bones in there. That's 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 what I've noticed. Well, I mean, especially in like a casserole type thing like this. So, so basically, think back to. Um, chicken pot pies of your youth. So I I uh, I have not very fond memories of chicken pot pie when I was a kid. Um, my mom is if she's watching to know that you know chicken pot pies it seemed like you know, they were we we bought them frozen. I never had one homemade when I was a kid. Um, and they were frozen and I think they they we bought them occasionally when they were on sale. Yeah. And um, that was before microwaves. And wash my hands off with the chicken. You know, this was before microwaves, and they came in little foil, individual little um, tin foil pan things. You stuck them in the oven, and it took an hour to cook each one. And I can tell you, when I was a kid, like when I was hungry, I'm, I'm hungry now. I'm hungry. And the, like dinner goes in the oven, it's going to be an hour until it's ready. Oh my God, it took forever. Don't worry, it'll be ready then, in an hour. And then, you know, to me, the chicken pot pies, these frozen ones, they just, they didn't taste very good to me. Like, they didn't have any flavor, and so I didn't, you know, starving by the time they were done, and then they, I just didn't think they tasted very good. But 
since as an adult made homemade chicken pot pies that, oh my gosh, delicious. You know, you're talking about those frozen chicken pot pies that your grandma or your mom was forcing yeah. you to eat, but I remember you making those exact same ones for me yeah. growing up. Back when we were poor. Dude, I, well, not even just back when we didn't know how to make amazing homemade keto yeah. chicken pot pies. But I remember I was the same way. I was very impatient. I wanted my chicken pot pie right now. <laughs> right now at, right now. Right so, now. So either I would be eating that thing half cooked or fully cooked and way too hot to eat. Oh, yes. They came out of the oven. They came 4, out. 4,000 degrees. 4,000 degrees. Hotter than a hot pocket. <laughs> hot pocket. Right away to just burn every part of your mouth. Yeah, yeah, so they didn't taste good then the rest of the time because your mouth was scalded and burned. They don't have any taste buds anymore. Yeah, yeah. there's no, that's the, that Maillard effect isn't going on with those ones. So I'm actually going to bring this back over and to help bring the temperature of the pan down, I'm going to throw this chicken in here. And cook it all together. That's right. We're, we're actually getting pretty close here, aren't we? Yeah. I need it. So I think the next step for me, if I remember correctly, is to roll this out on parchment paper. Well, I think you're going to have to chill it. Can you chill it a little bit? So it's yeah, so I would, so... You're gonna, have to, off, you're gonna have to wrap it in plastic wrap, um, or actually, if you could just throw the whole thing in the in the freezer. Yeah, I, think, I think I don't need a, I don't need a lid on it, do I? No. Yeah. I think I should be fine. I mean, we're not working in a restaurant here or anything. Well, I think the plastic wrap is just to so it doesn't dry out, right? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it's just gonna be in the freezer. Yeah. So the recipe she does say you could chill it for an hour in the fridge. You, you know. We're going to put it in the freezer for a bit to see how it does. So, if we had the magic of TV going on, we could have made a batch of this earlier. You know, we totally should have done that. We should have made an extra. Could have pulled it out. Pull it out right now. And it's done. Now we can try it and tell you how delicious it is. <laughs> oh, unfortunately, we're not that good at this. Oh, I think Santa Claus is here. My, my nephew is here. The good news is that we. Hello, welcome, sir. I think he's bringing us this. C come on in here and tell us the camera. You can smell this from the cul-de-sac? Yeah. Wow. We got some compliments from the uh, the guest here. My nephew has just arrived. So here's the uh, here is the um, cheese and almond flour and egg mixture that's going to be used for the crust here. It looks a little unappetizing right now, but that's because it doesn't have all the delicious flavors in there. We'll put this in the freezer probably for about, I don't know, 20 mm -hmm. minutes. We'll see how it goes. Hi, Brandon. Why, hello. Say hello to everyone. Hi. I don't know if I'm in camera. Come over a little yeah. bit, a little further over yeah. here. Perfect. What's up? What's up? My name is Br This is Brandon, my cousin. Brandon, his birthday is in one week? One week. Exactly a week. One exactly week. a week next Thursday. This man is turning a big 2-1. Thank you. I'm going to be an adult. You've been an adult since you're 18. Not my parents' eyes. 20, 26 is when you're really an adult. Oh, you, you think that you turn 21 and then you're, you're going to be an adult See, right now? Yeah, my mom's already crying about it. Oh, <laughs> Kicking no. you out right as you turn 21. Yeah. That's how it works. You're not even the Have baby. Fun. You're not even the baby, though. She's no. Got, she's got one no, more. No, but Kevin's the favorite. <laughs> the baby is always the favorite, though. I'm the baby and I'm the eldest and I'm the middle child. So and I that's why she only cares about half of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it'd be like, it'd be like three... For the chicken, please. Oh, okay. Brandon, come on in here. Yeah, what's up? After the cooking. Woo. Stirring chicken. I am glad that so I So just came. reset, Brandon. We've got this a uh, uh, copy of this cookbook that was sent to me. Coming out of nowhere for this Keto chicken savior. Keto comfort savior. foods. So what's in this? There doesn't happen to be rosemary in there, right? No, there's oregano and thyme. Okay. Are you like deathly allergic to rosemary? Yeah. I feel like every time I hang out with you, you're allergic to something new. Oh, you about yeah. Because I, I just find out about it. You know, I work at a grocery store. I was like, oh, it's good. I was stocking the seasonings and then just couldn't breathe. Oh. And I was like, oh, I wonder what it is. Oh, it's a broken rosemary. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. The usual, you know. You yeah. just wanted a little extra attention. Yeah. I actually know. When I want attention, I just randomly start crying. Um, it stopped working at home. <laughs> but it does work in public. People stare at you for quite a while. Well, especially when you're, you know, not a small kid like you are. Well, yeah, the smaller Large you are, man. the better. Yeah, the Large. smaller you are, the, like, it actually works out for you then. Now people are just like, should I call the cops? Or why is this guy crying in this daycare? Yeah. <laughs> Broke it into my house. I mean, I was crying at the daycare because they wouldn't let me in. I was yeah. like, I why know. is there age limits, that's kind of weird. I'm just looking for someone to watch after me for a little while. You got a little, you got a little stuck to the side here on this side. So there you go. My bad. It's all good. 
I just don't want it to get burnt. I mean, we, I mean I'm really excited for this pot pie. Like we were talking about earlier, I haven't had a pot pie millennia almost. Well, the last one you had, we were just telling a story about how they come out of the oven. So, do you have do you have, well, you memory, have, you have memories of uh, pot pie stories too? Like, what are your your memories of pot pies? I remember the favorite one, as I uh, I was at the grandma's. Yeah. And, and watch your grandma. <laughs> so she will later. She I went out. down downstairs and I grabbed two. Oh, from the freezer, right? She keeps them frozen in the, yeah. the freezer. There was a little like eighty nine cents. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the nice little ones frozen. Really nice ones. Like, they, were, not, they were good for how cheap they were. Well, I don't put the nice ones. They just were they are Marie, the pot pies. Marie yeah. Callender or the Swansons? Marie Callender. Oh, did you get Swansons? Oh. <laughs> I don't even know the difference. <laughs> No, there is a difference. One's good and one's Swanson's. <laughs> uh, so I brought them upstairs and I didn't know how to cook them. Well, I mean, you know. I think well, I tried to microwave them. I was going to say, because you're a guy and you didn't read the directions. Is that what? I'll figure this out. No, I was just too young to understand and I wasn't allowed to use the oven. I couldn't read because I was only 12. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I was almost 12 years old, so... I didn't learn how to read instructions until I was 24. <laughs> so not quite yet. That was a lot. Um, yeah, and I just kind of left them there. In, in the, the microwave? microwave? No, just, they, I think they ended up just being on the stove. Because <laughs> you, like, st you stirred at the pie, and you stirred at the microwave, and stirred at the pie, and then you're like... No, then I gave up. I was like, there's tin foil on there, there's a tin container on this, I know yeah. that can't go in there, so I don't know what to do. <laughs> what other ways Whatever it crossed through my mind that you can take it off. No, that's, oh. that is bewildering. That is next level. Or that there was another um, way of cooking things in the same house. Nope, that doesn't exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Grandma cook it for you. She wasn't, I don't know if she was awake. I think she was asleep, asleep with, with Because I'd woken up before her, or I was up at 6 o'clock in the morning playing RuneScape downstairs. Oh, the good old days, the RuneScape the good old days. days. <laughs> you remember when we went up there for a week, and we went upstairs, and it was like 7 o'clock in the morning to get coffee so we could stay up longer. Oh, yeah. And this was because you'd been up all night playing. Yeah, 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 7 a.m. We're not just waking up. No, we're not waking up. We've we're been up for like started. We've been <laughs> up for like 28 hours at that point. Like, you guys are like 12 or something. Yeah, like. we're 12. Old I think we're like 15 and 6. No, no, we're like, like 12. We're like, like yeah, like 12 11 or 12. 13 or something. I don't know. We were, we were young boys. We were in the zone though. Well, we weren't even playing the same game either. <laughs> like, <laughs> Brandon, I don't know if you know this or not, but Grandma has since confessed that she loves you guys more than she loves her own da daughters. So really, well, I mean, it's understandable. We're you don't remember cooler. that? I yeah, I don't know. That's a little weird. I feel like <laughs> to love me. Well, I mean, my mom's told me that she loves my girlfriend more than she loves me, and I think my grand I, also uh, understandable. No, my grandma. I said, I said grandma loves. Her. Oh, grandma loves my girlfriend more than me. So wait, that means my grandma loves my girlfriend more than she loves her own daughter. Yeah. Understandable. I mean, yeah. better personality. Yeah. Oh. Way more attractive. I mean, I'm talking about Kendall here, yeah. oh. not you. Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all love Carol here in the family. Do we have any, uh, do we have any questions or sure, comments? I'll take, I'll oh. Take a check on the, uh, on the Oh, wow. Here. I didn't know that I'm right there. No, you're right there. You're right there. Like, look. Don't, don't get, don't get spooked now. I'm spooked. How many people are watching? I'm scared now. Uh, 25,000. So, <laughs> Lin Linda has a question about her cholesterol. She was told recently she has a little high cholesterol, and she was curious if keto would help with cholesterol. Well, what our leading researchers, uh, Bullock and Finney, they've got a great video out there on YouTube that they talk about the research they've done, and what they see in people on a ketogenic diet, a low-carb, high-fat diet, is that um, universally, everyone's HDL goes up, which is what we consider the good cholesterol. Um, the um, triglycerides come down, which is a good thing as well. And then LDL is more variable, so that seems to be more of a genetic um, influence as far as whether LDL goes up or goes down. Uh, for about a third of the population, LDL cholesterol goes, goes down. Don't pretend like you can't see that. Who's that guy over there? Um, for the third of the population, LDL cholesterol goes down, third stays the same, and third goes up, actually. And um, however, what we see is, is that everybody gets decreased. All these other, info, or all these other factors that are um, important to consider in uh, long-term health and chronic health things, right? So we also see that inflammation dramatically goes down, insulin goes down, 
uh, blood glucose goes down as well. And so lots and lots of different factors say that um, the person is getting much healthier on a uh, ketogenic <coughs> diet. Sorry. We're cooking over here. Can you? <laughs> having fun stirring the meat. Okay. And, um. <laughs> okay. We're the little hoopballs over here, I guess. We, we yeah. just. We're not even doing anything. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, so. so uh, you the, know. the joke is that we're just not doing anything right now. Okay. And, yeah, so. <laughs> You know, the question is, will your cholesterol get better on a ketogenic diet? Now, your total cholesterol may go up, your LDL might go up, but your overall profile and your risk profile and all the risk factors dramatically improve. So There's so many I can't factors tell you, of cholesterol. Yeah, I can't tell you what your cholesterol is going to do, except for that we know that your HDL will go up, your triglycerides will come down, and a lot of other health factors will get better as well. Because so. as far as my understanding, too, you know, the doctor just saying you have high cholesterol doesn't really necessarily mean that much because... Right. There is a good cholesterol and there's a bad cholesterol yeah. if you have high good cholesterol. Yeah, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about cholesterol, right? So a lot of people think that cholesterol is bad, it needs to be as low as possible, and that just isn't even true at all. There's a bunch of different things that go into that. And, um, cholesterol is an essential molecule in our body, actually, and people with really low cholesterol actually have the highest um, risk for a lot of um, disease and things that cause death. Um, they have increased risk of cancer and so on and um, the other th you know there's people that have heart attacks every day that have normal cholesterol numbers or even low and there's a lot of um, a lot of misunderstanding about cholesterol but well, we're here today to make some delicious pot pie and I think this chicken is looking what's the next step in the pretty uh, close the next yeah. step right here so we is gotta to make the gravy oh the, we're making gravy too but we gotta have sauce for you, your. You can read that. have the sauce. You gotta have you sauce. Can, you can read that. I'm too occupied okay. holding these celery sticks. Yeah, good job. To do what you work right now. So. What? Add the chicken, saute yeah, yeah. until cooked, which we've done. And again, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> Keto Comfort Food by <laughs> Maria Emmerich. I was gifted a copy of this. It's, it's um, a really awesome book. We're making chicken pot pie. And, yeah. alright, so. Um, add the cream cheese. I have no idea. Cream cheese? To what? To that. Oh, to this? Yeah. Why would we do that? How much we put in? You this is a chicken thing. pan. You took the cutting board away. Yeah, because it had chicken on it. Yeah. You well, there's chicken in here. But if you... No, that's not how that works. Here, you want to open that? There's chicken in here. Kendall, open that. Brandon, we were talking Did earlier about... Did you put how... salt in the dough? No. Okay. Did you tell me to? No. The recipe did though, but you didn't read Ugh. it. I know, you're just going by what I I'm told over you, here so. listening to my instructioner, my instructioner. instructioner, my teacher. I am a cooking instructioner. Yes. Yes. All right, so cream Never cheese. Indubitably. <laughs> no matter how you say that word, nobody can say that you're saying it wrong. And. <laughs> Indubitably. In <laughs> Indubitably. I don't know if he's wrong. <laughs> and then we're like, going to need some chicken broth. It's like Worcestershire sauce. Nobody knows how to say it correctly. Yeah, can we get some Worcestershire sauce in this? Worcestershire. If you're from East Coast, you can Close say enough, it. I have no idea. I, uh, it's the Worcestershire. When you look it up on Google uh, and ask for it to say it, it says I have no idea. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> it won't even say it for you. 100% you know, true. This does not look so, like the proper way to serve it. Well... Hopefully, hopefully stirring hopefully requires an up and down action yes. in the center of the pan. Nowhere else. <laughs> here, let me give it a nice little, uh, nice good Ooh. polish try over here. Yeah, watch this, watch this. Unheard of. You should flip it. Give it a nice little, See what? little oh, egg flip. Oh, it's actually pretty oh, heavy. Um, yeah. Are you weak? Yeah, incredibly. Indubitably. Mm. Mm. Alright, uh, was there another question or comment? I thought I saw one there. That was res a response. Oh, somebody responded to it? Yeah. Oh. Did they like it? Yeah, go ahead and share this video <laughs> with... Uh... Yes, smash that like button. Um... If we get to 25,000 likes this time, I will eat a whole what? egg by myself. Raw. Blindfolded. No... No bamboozle. Cream. No bamboozle. Yeah, no bamboozle. No bamboozle, I will eat a whole egg raw. 25,000 likes. 25,000. That's all it takes? That's all it takes. Okay. And if we, get, if we get 15 laughing faces, I'll chug a glass of water in under a minute. 
<laughs> Blindfolded. Challenge. <laughs> yeah. Blindfolded. Blindfolded. Yeah. No mouth for Mike. Right? This is crazy. No mouth. This is crazy. Talk. Unheard of challenges right here. This yeah, is put crazy. Talk. 15 laughing faces. I don't know if it's possible. Here's the water, Brandon. You might as well get started. <laughs> so, I okay. It, I don't think it'll happen. Alright, so the only thing left we need to do then is to roll out the dough. You oh, you made a gravy already? That, this is the gravy right there. What? No, you don't yes. put chicken this bits is, inside of gravy. This is the chicken. Yes, no, the exactly. chicken We're gravy. making the sauce in the gravy. Oh, this is the chicken sauce. The sauce. Now put that sauce in there. Let's check out this and see how this is doing. How's that doing? It looks like it's a little bit firmer. Yeah, you can roll that. That's perfect. Well, this is, look, it looks exactly perfect. the same, but it is much better looking. Yeah. All right, so man we're not, we're not sponsored by these guys, but I love these uh, individual little parchment sheets. Sponsored by Reynolds Wraps. Do you, know, you want to do it here? Or do you want? To, you should do it down there where people can see. Oh, no one wants to see me. Yes. Remember, you're half my favorite. What are all these celery sticks for? Well, that's how they came from the store. Why? Why? This is what's wrong with capitalism in America. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All these celery sticks. <laughs> so one parcel paper down, the dough's gonna go on top of that, and then another parcel paper on top, and then it's warm on the bottom. I don't think it's fine now. Maybe need it. Once you flip it open, now it's warm no, on the other side. It's totally fine. It'll be good. This is a big, big piece of dough. It's a piece of cake to bake it for you. Alright, so the last thing that's going in our chicken filling here is we're going to do some chicken bone broth. I just have this. Again, not sponsored by any of these companies. Sponsored by broth. Chicken broth. Boom. <laughs> Never sponsored, but always sponsored. Yeah. Sponsored by, um, Pillsbury. Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, Marie Callender's Chicken Pot Pies? Yes, is that we're actually, also sponsored by that. That story was 100% made up. Um, <laughs> in the uh, situation room. This is yeah. good. That's going to be a lot of dough. That's a lot of dough! You want to make it the shape of this, right? That's what I was trying to do, yeah. Make it exactly square. We're gonna Can check. I get a ruler out to uh, mm -hmm. measure? You have to use a, a, a T. Do you want a towel on the bottom so it doesn't roll around as much? No, I enjoy the difficulty. I was serious. Well, we don't have all day here. We gotta have dinner ready. Oh, before he can I get a towel underneath this so no. that the chicken doesn't move around when no. we're stirring it? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, so I think we're gonna put the broth. How thin do I need to get this spread out? Because this is pretty thick still, so. Well, it needs to be thin enough to be like the top of a pie. How's that? Not that thick. Sponsored so by. So I would think we want to boil this down a little bit so it's a little thicker. A little thicker. Although the recipe doesn't actually say that; it just says to yeah. add that in and then pour it into the ramekin. So the way that the recipe is written is you can make little individual pot pies, but we're gonna make one big giant pot pie. Because we're we're. Mad. Oh, and then. They pointed out to me today that we're making chi chicken pot pie on April 20th, which is... What day is, wait, what four, day is today? 420. Wait, the 20th of the 4th month? Oh, you missed 420 already passed. Too. It's the yeah, idea, I don't get it. It's the, wait, like, is it so like, it's kind of May the 4th be with you? Right, exactly. It's like the Star Wars April day. the April the 20th be with you. Oh, I think it's something to do with Back to the Future, right? Yeah, I did 88, yeah. man. I, I had it perfectly It was 4 times 20 is now it's boiling. No, that's good. These are trouble it in. And then if you if you take the square root of eighty, you get a number that I don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> and what do you do with that number? And, uh, so how does this look, Carol? Oh, that's beautiful. It looks like cheese. Pie crust. Yeah, it looks like cheese. Looks like we should taste it a little bit. Whoa, there's Whoa. pies in there, lady. Yeah, that's that's okay, I got Zika while I was in Mexico, so... Yeah, apparently. I can, tell you for, I can tell you forgot to put the salt in there, but I think it's still going to be fine. We'll do, you just sp sprinkle some salt over the top of it. Sprinkle some salt. Let's that. improvise. You know what? Yeah, can we just sprinkle some salt on it? Instead of salt, just sprinkle pepper. Pepper? Yeah. How about just put some sugar? Yeah. Yeah. Sugar. That, that goes along with the diet. <laughs> Perfect. Sugar. Um, can you sprinkle some salt in here? Um, I don't think that's going to... 
If you're, uh, no. No, because then it's just going to be, and especially not that, because it's going to be too coarse. Yeah, that'd be way too so, coarse. Perfect. The other thing we want to do is we want to take... You just put salt on it, but okay. We want to taste this. To actually, like... To see if we need some salt in here. So everybody... I don't think you put any salt in here, though, have you? No, I, no, but... Of course it's going to need salt. How does it taste? Does it taste of any salt? Oh, that's really yummy, but yeah, salt. No, 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 it doesn't taste that good to me. No? It tastes delicious. Uh, no. Want try it, Smells okay. delish. That's all I can say. You know, it needs to satisfy oh, all it does, of this. Oh, it does say uh, a quarter teaspoon. We're doing a triple batch, so it should be three quarters of a teaspoon. I really don't want to feel it to see if it feels good, because it, it looks hot. You just ask him. Um, How do you feel, chicken? All right, yeah. I'm going to turn this off, because I think that's good Do you feel good? good? Enough. Oh, wait, what temp was it on? Because then we can guesstimate what the feel is. I have put my hand inside of a boiling pot of water before. Which is 212. So this feels about 209. Mm. That's nice and salty now. Delicious. I like it. All right. I, think, I think it's ready. I think it's yeah. ready to go. Brandon? I think we're almost yeah. here. We're almost yeah. ready. So Pour that in there. Can you do it or is it is it too heavy for you? We're going to try it, folks. Light bite, light bite. Yeah, this isn't a problem. <laughs> Brandon's actually shaking his boots over here. His leg is about to fall out. Don't drop it. I'm Don't not drop wearing it. boots. He's lying. I'm shaking in my socks. So if you're just tuning in, we've made a uh, dough that's going to go on the top of this. We've made an entire chicken pot pie. It's already cooked. We just need to pull it out of the oven real quick because we're a cooking show. And we we talked. It's not done. We talked about this earlier. We wish we did that. We're not quite that. So this needs to go on top now. We need to call Rachel Ray next time and get her in here, because she just has it done every time. How does it, how does it, how do we get this on Call the name. How does this go? We're going to take it and we're going to flip it? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 All right, right here, and then we're going to... So we might have... No, to... don't put your hand on it. Whoa. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, don't... Oh, oh yeah. Perfect. Oh. Okay, you got to pinch yeah. it around the side. Just pinch. It looks pretty... Pinch yeah. it. Um, no, it already um, looks pretty. Well, what are we doing? Just kind of make it look like a pie. It there looks like go. a pie. That looks nice and good. It actually looks like a giant enchilada. <laughs> we're in Mexican theme today. Yeah. yeah. We're actually changing the recipe. This is an enchilada. Well, you could very well make you this just call this an enchilada. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going to call it. All right. So this isn't the prettiest uh, pie crust on well, here. It's not done yet. It doesn't have to be pretty to be good. Just like me. Who says you're not pretty, Brandon? Me. All right, there we go. <laughs> this is going in the oven now. Barehanded. Yeah, because the pan's not hot. Well, I know. I just wanted to let everyone know that I thought they the didn't need to use oven mitts. The point of cooking show is explain everything you're doing. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I'm okay. Move the pan. So the recipe okay, says moves. to cook for 15 to 20 minutes in the little individual ramekins. Those of you that are cooks out there know it's going to take a little longer than that because it's a big one. So I'm going to just start with 20 minutes. And we will, we will check it after that to see how it looks. So I thought if while, you were using a bigger pan that you had to cook it for less. I know, you would think that, but... Just do it for 500 degrees for 8 minutes and it should be good. We might be running out of time though with the keto chat at that point. So... No, people gotta see us eat it. They wanna know how it tastes. You need to stay here for 20 minutes? Well... I can't so, be that entertaining. Uh, well, Brandon brought some snacks for us. I did? Yeah, I did. I brought those that are in his hand. So Brandon brought us some nice snacks. If you have any questions while we're waiting for our delicious pot pie to finish cooking, please type them. Is uh, there a, uh... Have you guys ever watched paint dry before? Because that's what it feels like cooking. <laughs> well, last time we did a cooking show, people were really disappointed because we turned off before we finished it. So, so uh, Brandon brought us some snacks here. You want to tell us what you brought us? Um, friends will second you. Epic, if you don't know this company, hey. again, not sponsored by them. No. What? Questions. Oh, Check questions. questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's we'll why I'm to... over here with the questions. Well, it doesn't person. look like there's any new ones. Well, let me see here. Debbie wants to know what she's missing. What are you Bjorn missing, Debbie? Says, chicken licking is licking chicken. <laughs> All right, Bjorn. Debbie, we are cooking out of Maria Emmerich's brand new Keto Comfort Foods cookbook. We are making chicken pot pie. And the recipe is on page 196. This book is available at Amazon right now. Uh, my publisher sent me uh, this copy of it for me to review, and it's really awesome. I mean, Keto, um, Maria Emmerich is the queen of comfort foods. Like, every former keto craving, or you know, your 
high carb life that you had before is covered in here. And if you don't, if you haven't had one of these cookbooks before, like Victory Belt does these amazing cookbooks with tons of full color, beautiful photos. Like pretty much every other page is a photo of the food. And so um, they're beautiful. They're extremely well done. You've got the, the carb counts and all that in it. So for the, for this chicken pot pie, um, per serving, 631 calories, 50 grams of fat, 38 grams of protein, 9 grams of carbs, and 3 grams of that is going to be fiber. And um, so, using that, but even that coarse salt right there. Oh yeah, <clears throat> for the photo. If right, you're looking so, for a picture book, the the reads really rough, but the pictures are amazing. This? Yeah, that oh, book. Okay. And this is from the man yeah. that hasn't learned how to read yet. Okay, he won't learn to read until he's 24. He's just yeah. knows that. He's it's, just, we're getting there. <laughs> pictures are just way too entertaining. A, B, D. So, let's take a look on the next segment of our cooking show. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. That, that was all the questions we've got? Yeah. We can close it? Okay. okay. You, got, you got the bookmark. Alright, everyone. So, I'm here today with the epic brand, Delicious Flavor Goodness. We have the epic brand artisanal chicharrones, pork rinds as well. Uh, this is just the traditional sea salt and pepper flavors. We, had, we were looking in Whole Foods a while ago because epic has a bunch of different brands of uh, pork rinds, a bunch of different flavors. Well, they have two. Well, yeah, well, this is the only one that I saw, that we saw that didn't have sugar in it. This is, so the sea salt and pepper is pretty good here. Not a lot of ingredients in this one as well. But this is new for me. I haven't had these yet. This is epic brands um, gluten-free grass-fed Venison steak. This is venison. Little, little jerky. Jerky. Venison jerky. Yeah, so so a lot of people, um, you know, with a previous diet mentality, they always ask me, like, well, what kind of protein bars? Any snack bars? Because people think that to be on a diet, you need to have, like, protein bars. And frankly, most protein bars are simulated candy bars. They so that's the reason people eat them. Insanely unhealthy, having worked in a uh, GNC. <laughs> every single protein bar out there is Everyone. not very it's not, good It's not there's like, oh, most of them. It's every single one. Yeah, so... It's just sugar. These, I think these, these, this is meat. Like, the original protein bar is just meat, right? So, um, so unlike most beef jerky out there has lots of added sugar to it, Epic Brand has um, several of their meat bars that are keto friendly, actually. And apparently, weak young boys can't open them. Yeah. So the venison one uh -huh. is the new one they just came out with salt and pepper and uh, sea salt and pepper strip. Looks nice, nice like a Tootsie Roll, actually. It looks a nice little Tootsie a Roll. Flat color Tootsie too. Roll. Ingredients are venison, sea salt, cracked pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. Um, for one strip, 45 calories, one gram of fat, so it's pretty lean. Um, and 210 milligrams of sodium, less than one gram of carbs. So that's just going to be coming from the glycogen that's naturally occurring in the venison and a little bit of that onion and garlic powder too. So eight grams of protein. Um, what do you guys think? Pretty good. You know, I like it. The black cracked pepper is a little, a little strong for me, but... A little bit too much spice for my taste. Too much spice. I'm a little more of a hot kind of guy. Yeah, it's very definitely very black peppery. I think it's great. I'd say it's a little on the dry end, but that's going to come with the fact that it's low in fat. Mm -hmm. Venison is usually pretty low in fat, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And, oh wow, it's got 8% of your daily iron needs. That's but it does good. definitely have some pretty good flavor. Yeah. It's like a, a like, beef stick that's been squished flat. You know, to me at first, it looked like it wasn't that much. But are, you, are you filling up already? You don't have room for dinner now? I'm full. Oh. I'm full. All right, I'll save room for the pot pie. What else you got? You gonna save those for later and not let us have them? So perfect snacks on 420. Still chewy. Perfect snacks on 420. Yeah, still don't get what you're getting at with that. That's all right. Apparently these they're artisanal, artisanal pork rinds are absolutely fantastic when you're just looking for a little bit of munch, you know, just a little bit of foods to put down that that go of yours. These artisanal salt and pepper, sea salt and pepper pork rinds. You know, me and Brandon are actually pretty big pork rind aficionados. Oh yeah. We have eaten probably in our lifetime over 5,000 bags of pork rinds. Mm, <laughs> that's an understatement. <laughs> per person. <laughs> yeah, that's so, a little bit. Penelope is, um, we have a little guest visitor. I'm going to see if I can get her on here. 
She's come to see pork rinds. Oh, she ran away. She's gone. These, oh, great. You scared her. These things are... I, the thing I like about these is the size of these ones. They're nice and large. Is the crunch good? That's yeah. that's my favorite part. They're the large pork rinds. They're kind of that melt... I got a small one. Melt in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to hear that. Wow. Really? It's a good stuff. Crunch is lacking a little bit. But they melt in your mouth. But the flavor, mm -hmm. the flavor's there. Nice and delicious. As Boyle okay. would say, this is a 10 out of 10. Did you, yes. read, did you read the ingredients? What do you mean? To the, to the folks? What? To the fine folks out there? the ingredients? Alright, there's pork rinds in here. <laughs> Wouldn't have guessed. Pork rinds, salt, black pepper, sea salt, mm -hmm. onion powder, and garlic powder. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know how that ended up back in my hand. Is, is that one so much bigger? These are good. Crunch factor. Now, definitely a lot better on that one. Bet you can't have just one. It's too late, sweetie. I don't you get you it. You can't bet like that. That's a losing bet. They're delicious. Yeah, I've already well, eaten too. Why would you bet on them? We've had these before, and they are they are hard to eat. Just a little bit of them. So oh, yeah. it's really easy to only eat one bag yeah. at a time, an hour. <laughs> if you're somebody who struggles with resisting uh, tasty snacks, these only buy help. three at a time then. Yeah. Because then I guarantee you, you only eat three by the time you go to bed. By the time you go back to the store and get one. Yeah. So, I mean, normally I finish a bag on the way home. Do you need the, the yeah. next bag? Yeah, and then I eat the next bag, and then I go back to the store crying because I almost ran out of pork rinds. How is the pot pie looking? I will just I, I stare at that. Not even close. Yeah. Maybe we should get Bob in on this. So who? Bob? He's a pro professional chef. Get Bob. Oh, Runs yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob Belcher. Bob the Burgers. Yeah, yeah Bob, Bob Belcher. Belcher. What's his name? Bob Belcher. What was that before? Bob the Burgers. <laughs> name is Bob the Burgers. <laughs> yeah, so he just bobs those. The burgers. way we can speed this up is we can put this on broil. What is that going to do? Or... Well, it's going to put all the heat... Oh my god, this looks so hey, good. Hey, stop the heat out of the oven. Bubbly and good and... Okay, at 10 more minutes, 11 more minutes, then we're at 20 minutes. And then we can put it on broil and, and toast the top of it real nice. So, those of you that have ever made homemade pot pies, you know that nice bubbly... Uh, right out of the Marie the Calendar's on. box. Oh, right, right. So we're going to burn our mouths on camera for this as well. Nope. No. I That's don't. not gonna happen. So I am not burning my mouth ever. It's gonna be done and they're gonna have to weed a little longer to even try mm -hmm. it, so let's let's check. So what other keto news do we have to uh, share? I you know, I usually only have an hour worth of keto material in my arsenal, so yeah. I'm literally fresh out. So you're up you're up with that now? Uh, how long up with what? How long you guys been hmm? How long you guys been going? Four, uh, four? one hour and seven minutes. Ooh. Looks like it's time for Brandon to step in. I'm fresh out of material. Out of material? That's it? Me too. <laughs> well, uh... Um, yeah, I tried to make a joke. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> oh, I'm laughing now. I wasn't supposed to laugh, was I? No. Alright, so if you're just tuning in, uh, we have, are making Kino Comfort Foods. Come real quick question. Wait, okay, no. You got a quick question? Yes. What's up? Thank you. Well, don't spoil your dinner now. I know you're waiting for that uh, delicious. You can't eat it? No, it's got eggs in it. Brandon can eat eggs. Just eat the middle. <laughs> He's just getting the pork rinds on the top. We actually yeah, we exactly. should have taken these pork rinds Make and crunched them all up and then just Sprinkled it on top like a nice little. He was that when you like don't dust? Don't do that. Like we'll eat the crust off of his part. You can have some middle and some inside. Part, some inside. Some of the inside. Some goodness. of the gooey goodness inside, and then the creamy cream, cream cheese it. chicken. Mmm, sounds good. That's that good part. With a little what? bit of pork rind to scoop it up. Yeah. You know, um, that actually uh, sounds very appetizing. I'm looking forward to the future. Mm, my my stomach is getting ready. Mmm. My stomach is uh, been ready because I woke up. When you, you woke up and now you're hungry? Yep, pretty much. Even though I've been up since 4 a.m.? P.m. Uh, I woke uh, up as soon as I got here. <laughs> Bjorn is saying that the best snack is dried fish. Like uh, sardines? I'm assuming he's from someplace. Sardines uh, are wet. What? Not tropical. Not always. Northern. Normally in an oil. Normally? 
northern region that has um, dried fish as a snack. You know, my favorite snack is actually Spam. Really? I love Spam. My favorite snack is water because it is uh, high in electrolytes and carbohydrates. Yeah. I also enjoy um, snacking on wonderful life events, um, spending time with family. So my mom just got back from Mexico the other day, and mm. she came home and was like, I'm thirsty. You know, I feel kind of, I feel like it's kind of time to go to sleep. I'm going to get myself some water before I go back to bed. She takes a sip out of our filtered water. She goes, ugh, this tastes like dirty water. Because apparently the bottled water in Mexico is so fancy that she, so can't, she can't even stomach our water anymore here. I that brought she, perfect it. That she went perfect. out. Oh, you're going to... Say that I went and bought bottled water. Went out and got some hope, some bottled water to compensate. It's, it's sponsored how... by uh, 365 spring water bottles. <laughs> but I don't know. I, if I had to choose what kind of water bottle I'd be bringing out, I would be buying the 365 water bottle. Well, because we, you know that's your favorite kind of mayo. Yeah, because it's, it's the Whole Foods uh, Kirkland brand. I would bring out no, the uh, Voss Kirkland. water bottles because my Norwegian water is the uh, best water in the world. Norwegian. Well, you should talk to Bjorn over here about his uh, fish sticks that he's got. These dried fish. You don't. He yeah. didn't tell you that Bjorn, they were fish sticks. Bjorn's fish. probably Danish. Yeah. Um, he lives in the north of Norway. Danish. Norwegian. I'm pretty sure that's just European. <laughs> I think they just call those Europeans. Yeah. <laughs> Bjorn, what would you call yourself? Oh, Are you Norwegian. He probably calls himself Bjorn. He calls it. <laughs> he probably calls himself Brexit. Woo! And the fresh beans. <laughs> I even though that oh, was a little oh, stale. Spicy. <laughs> yeah. That one's got a little bit more cracked pepper than this uh, epic pork rinds, which is quite good. Yeah, let me get some of those brand new uh, Can I just get mm. one? Mm. Oh, I think those have eggs in them. No, they don't. Yeah. <laughs> don't lie to me. That's pretty sure. I read the ingredients. It's egg powder. It's garlic, onion, and egg powder. Yeah, that's right. See, I'm not allergic to egg like powder. <laughs> I'm allergic to the eggs that it's you right put there. inside of you, though. Well, don't put those inside of you. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> those eggs right there. Why don't you just get... <laughs> those eggs. What if you get near to eggs? Uh, can, you, can you just put a whole egg down your throat? <laughs> He's Superman and eggs are his kryptonite. What if you... Look, I wouldn't say that I'm so super. Look at one. That's rude. Test his strength. Would you would you go up to some kid that's deathly allergic to beans and go, look a bean? He's not deathly allergic to them. Would you look peanuts? Would you, look would you find someone that's discomfort. mildly allergic to peanuts and be like, here, try a peanut? I bet you're fine. You? Yeah. I bet you don't have anaphylactic shock here. Yeah. Huh. Oh, you forgot your heavy pen? Try something you're allergic to. Just for my amusement. You, you're, you We're on have, camera. You don't, have that, you don't have that kind of allergy to eggs, though. We don't know? <laughs> well, you, you do know, because you haven't, like, yeah. had to go to the hospital. I'm not dead. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you would know. No, I just get headaches that are very annoying. Okay. Yes. So technically, it's called a food sensitivity, then. Oh. It's an allergy. That way I remember to not eat it. Okay. <laughs> Because we're sensitive to dairy. Well, I dairy. still eat, I still drink dairy yeah. because I'm sensitive to it. Well, you can have different reactions to different types of food. My favorite thing, though, is almond milk, sponsored by Silk. You know, I actually really don't like almond milk. I enjoy the flavor of almond milk quite a lot. You know, I prefer 365 brand water. <laughs> Mayo. You'd rather drink mayo. I, I actually did drink a whole container of mayonnaise today. Have you, I got have you ever made a mayo milkshake? You know what I should do is just mayonnaise, salt, and cream. Yeah. Why not? Don't forget and hot sauce. Your hot Valentina's sauce. hot sauce. Actually, we need you need to try your hot sauce packet with this uh, amazing hot pot pie that we've made. Yeah, so we went down, so I, I mean, we, I said, we, went down. we went down to Mexico, no, my mom went down to Mexico, and she brought back a nice little assorted hot sauce packet. Now, is that as authentic as Valentina hot sauce? This is more authentic, <laughs> because this is literally I purchased, because this, this, this was bought in custom, this yeah. has a wicker basket container, this is, yeah. they made this plastic bottle on the street. You haven't even opened, is it plastic bottles? Yeah. Wicker glass. 
No, that's plastic. I'm pretty sure that's plastic. Let's see. Open it. This is plastic. No, I, no, I can't. Open did it. you fly United? Were you? Did you have to fight for your no, seat? No, I have never flown on United. Hmm. No, um, they they like to unite I, their fists. I with flew their Alaska. Oh, I didn't know Alaska was in Mexico. The more you know. These are plastic bottles, unfortunately. Are they? Then it's not authentic. Hmm. Nope. Go like this. Like I trust that. you. Go like this. What what flavor is that one? Green smoked? That's probably got dye in it. Oh yeah, green chili. Oh yeah, the ingredients are really long. Done there. All right, so we're just waiting the last few minutes for Keto Comfort Foods for our chicken pot pie to get out of the oven here. Ooh, there's a two, red habanero. Two and a half minutes. Let's let's take a look. They don't have to have the ingredients list. No, no, they're actually. Oh the my god. Okay, I think we're getting. We're, I think this is gonna be good. I think that doesn't look like pot pie quite yet. Well, because you guys didn't mix the edges. Oh, our bad. Apparently, you here's the, the here's the ingredients list. list. Yeah, this definitely isn't mm. even in English. We have less than half of it's in English. <laughs> no, yes. No, Brandon, you gotta, you gotta got, read the bottom part. Or is it the fact that I just can't read? Well, Let's see. Yeah. This does have a lot of food coloring in it. Sorry. That is my favorite thing. Sorry, those words are too tiny for me to read. Water, habanero, pepper, iodized salt, acetic acid, spices, xanthan gum, modified starch, BHA, BHT, Y profile, galate. Okay, yellow I six. Can... Oh, yellow six? Ooh. Only in that one. There's... You don't appreciate your, your fine Mexican hot sauces that I picked up. <laughs> my right fine here. Mexican hot sauces. Can you save those? That's why I was leaving them in the container. To give them to your children possible. someday. To pass these on. Look, 2045. All right, minute and a half. This was legal and in America. A, <laughs> I know you guys are going to be uh, really excited and anticipatory, yeah. anticipa anticipating this delicious hot pot pie. Hot pot pie. All right, any keto questions out there for well, our live are keto there any KQs? KQs? Oh, okay. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. My mind. Yeah. Oh, hey, kitty. Mm, yes. You got the kitty. kitty she hasn't kitchen. had her experience on the camera today. She usually likes being on the camera. Well, she does when we sit on the couch in the studio. Mm -hmm. In the media room. Yeah, get her away from the uh, cooking area here. What? Okay, 38 seconds until it's done. Let's see. Get ready to burn your mouth. Any other... No, we're not getting any other questions here. Yeah, I was telling you, man, we usually and, just have an hour of content here. And we, um, we have not reached that 25,000 like. Yeah, we're actually, we're very day. close to the 25,000 like that I will eat an entire egg blindfolded, yeah. no hands, raw, upside down. And upside down, okay. With the shell on. And then it was uh, 15 smiley faces that Brandon was going to... Drink it into yeah. a glass of water. A whole glass of water in one hour. All right, so let's see what we got here. Well, I was thinking it was going to boil over the top, which it didn't quite do that. So let's check the crust. Yeah, it looks like it's done. Oh my gosh, this looks. Oh my gosh. I really it's like nice. Delicious. The nice pan over to that. Yeah, so should I put some in a dish and show what it looks like dishing it out, or you want to come over and show Well, I just want to see what it looks like in the pan here, because I think yeah, that looks... Yeah, bubbly goodness. Because so this, this is, is our... exactly what you're looking for. Now, again, we did uh, three times the recipe that's in the book, and we put it in a big, giant casserole dish, and I told the story in the beginning. If you missed it, go back and watch it, but about why we make such big portions in this family. And, uh, oh, wait, come back over here. Let me show the... Where you go more? No. The ooey gooey gooeyness I'm of coming. This. I'm flying. Oh, don't make people sick. Oh, I know. It's just... Woo. So check out this pot pie crust. Like, look at that nice... That looks like... It's nice Pie and crust thick. and ooey gooeyness and bubbly. Now, now and... eat it. I want to see you burn your mouth. No, that's too hot to eat. <laughs> oh, wait. Let me... Let me blow... I can do it. Let's you can do it? Yeah, it come on. Up. You can do this. It's only like 350 degrees. Oh, or 425. You're fine. You got it. It tastes just like pie crust on top of there. It's amazing. 
It's really good. Yum. All right. Well, I think we're going to sign off now and we're going to eat a bit of this uh, chicken pot pie. Again, out of the Keto Comfort Foods, new cookbook by Maria Emmerich. Yum. Go get a copy of this now. It's so good. That's all I got for you right now. Thanks for watching Keto Chat Live this week. We'll see you next week. Bye.